These days, when we hear the word movement, we're often thinking about social or political protest. But in the context that we're going to be speaking about today, we are talking about dance, African and contemporary dance that is conceived, choreographed, and performed by Ron K. Brown. We're here at the Prince Music Theater, where Evidence will be performing this weekend. This is Stephanie Renee, and you're watching another edition of Word Backstage. So I guess my first question is, when you knew that dance was your calling? Uh, so when I was in the second grade, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. In the second grade, I went on a family, uh, now that's a school trip to see the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went home and made a dance with a chair. And I was like, oh, you can make a dance about God and people. And so that was... I, kn I knew then that I loved to make dances and to dance. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Now, do you come from an artistic family? Or because, you know, when we talk about sort of the transition of, of black boys or young black oh. men into dance, how, how, how that was received or how that was nurtured? Okay, so listen. So my mom is an incredible, well, she's in heaven now, mm -hmm. right? 21 years. Incredible painter, carved wood, sculpted. My handwriting is atrocious, okay? <laughs> I'm dancing around the house. She said, boy, and then when I was a little boy in the supermarkets, right? Yeah. So I moved all the time, yeah. going to preschool before preschool. She said, I would not sit still. So I left the dance. Eight years old, she takes me to the school of, for dance, mm -hmm. Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration Plaza. Because yes. we grew up around the corner. Mommy, there's 80 girls. <laughs> there's n there weren't. <laughs> but when you're eight years old, right. the only boy you feel like that, right? Yeah. My mom, she knew I, I loved to dance. Another thing, uh, there was a, ju a junior high school for performing arts. He tried to take me there. They let the people out of the district of a certain uh, grade level, uh, average. And my grades were great. They said, no, we let all the people out. You have to go to the same junior high school that's in the neighborhood, which I think is where my mother, all my aunts, and maybe my grandmother went. Okay. Okay, okay now my mom's like, oh, there's an audition for the dance at the Harlem. I'm 12 years old. We get to the door of our apartment. She goes into labor with my little brother. Wow. So I say, okay, forget it. I'll, <laughs> I'll be a writer. Because <laughs> I have a sister who's two years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, this dance thing is too late. I'm, I can't be a ballet dancer, be a big brother, and write. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I just think about th there's there's so much that that's rich in that. D timing is everything, one. Uh -huh. But also that being raised by someone who already embraced mm -hmm. the arts, that there's a certain connectedness that you can't get away from. Right. And we're also talking about pre-gentrification bed oh, oh, yes. So, So describe that for people, because folks that are visiting New York now are getting a different oh. experience. So, okay, a couple amazing things, right? So um, now I've had my company for 32 years. Our offices and uh, rehearsal space is at Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration, mm -hmm. where right, that first class was, yeah. right? The president of the organization said, oh, Ron, thank you so much for coming back. Mm -hmm. Some people, they grow up here, they leave, they don't come back. Thanks for coming back, especially when you see other folks trying to take things over. Mm -hmm. They said, yeah, we, if we allow people to do that, they will. Yeah. And so we have to claim what is ours and say, thank you for visiting. <laughs> Yes. And this is what is here. Right, right. Right. So, so that, that sense of connectedness um, is crucially important. And I, I love the way you say that we understand folks are visiting. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm originally from D.C., living here in Philadelphia and developing professionally here. It's the same conversation we have with a lot of people. There are a lot of people who are worried. Uh -huh. Not just nervous, not right. just annoyed. They're uh -huh. worried right. about what a changing Philadelphia looks like and what it offers to them. Uh -huh. So there is a way that artists uh -huh. work through some of those issues through the medium. Yes. Um, yes. And so, you know, being in, in Bed-Stuy and, and working with your company, having your company rooted there, talk a little bit about how that reflects itself in, in the, the pieces. Uh -huh. So the... One, so, so in, in the work, there's always, the ancestors are always there, yes. right? The name of the company, Evidence, is because I want to reflect the human condition. So we are always there mm -hmm. without apology, 
right? So from the very beginning, from seeing what Mr. Ailey did, oh, okay, Catherine Dunham, mm -hmm. and then the incredible activist poet, Audre Lorde, asking the audience, are you doing your work? And so I think all of these people, my family, these teachers, these legends said, no, Ron, do your work. Make sure that people understand that we are here. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and we're not moving anywhere. Right. And so we was on a, a panel uh, a couple of weeks ago, and someone in the audience was saying, oh, the, the climate, you know, all this, right? Mm -hmm. Political climate, da da da. And yes. I said, listen, we have been through worse. Mm -hmm. Our folks have gone through worse. Mm -hmm. So we can do it because they did. So don't trip because they're not hosing folks down. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. They, you know, they're hanging nooses to remind people, but no, people have dealt with worse. And so I know that we can do this because they did. Mm -hmm. And so with the, the idea of being led by the ancestors, but also being here, being uh -huh. present, yes. um, does that influence the idea that your company embraces both African and contemporary? Of, of course. And so when I, um, so I started late because of mm -hmm. <laughs> all of that fear. <laughs> and so I graduated a year early from high school mm -hmm. um, and thought, okay, I'll, I'll dance for the summer. But I had this scholarship for journalism at a small school in Winooski, Vermont. Go, okay, I'm gonna dance for the summer. Okay. I realized I cannot dance. I was like, oh. mommy, can I give up this scholarship and learn how to dance? She said, I told you so. Get a job and learn how to dance, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm making up dances as a boy that is just learning composition, yeah. learning techniques. And so probably in the early 90s, I started teaching at a school of where there was dancers from across the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Folks from Guinea, from Senegal, from Brazil, they would take my class, I would take, take their class. But I'm a contemporary artist, but so I'm not gonna, I didn't wanna bastardize traditional dance. Mm -hmm. But I would play around with uh, the rhythms, the techniques from all of these different traditions, yeah. okay. I choreographed this piece called Dirt Road, which is about a family going down south for funeral. Mm -hmm. And inside of it is all of this material, right? We're in Richmond, Virginia, and someone in the audience says, Ron, can you please speak to us about the presence of Manjani in your work? I was like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, it has, it's, not, it's not hidden. Right. At the same year, I was in um, North Carolina at the American Dance Festival, a uh, sister from uh, Ivory Coast mm -hmm. was in my class for six weeks. I take all my technique classes in the repertory class. At the end of the six weeks, she says, oh, I want to show you a solo. She so shows me this solo. Incredible. I'm like, oh, sister, this is incredible. And she speaks Susu, Malenke, French. I don't speak any of that. I don't know how we were communicating, but dance is like that. Yes. And she said, oh, no, that's all, everything that you taught me this summer. I was like, what? Mmm. And she said, you're doing something where you're making dance speak. Mm -hmm. Come to the Ivory Coast next year. I'm working with a theater company, and they want me to take traditional um, dances from the villages. Yes. And this is a contemporary theater company. And make it speak. So I think, come there and teach. And I want to start a dance company. Mm. So then she exposes me to, you know, make me feel comfortable. I'm saying traditional artists taking on social clubs, so right. go to our ovarian club where folks are in, you know, dressed like us, fly, 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 singing Black Street. Uh -huh. Can't speak English, <laughs> but they're singing, right? But right. cool, cool, cool. Or Liberian club where they speak English in the cut in the hood, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, traditional ceremonies. I was like, oh, uh, 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 uh. So oh, I started to understand where I was in this continuum of traditional dance. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want to bastardize it. They said, no, Kevin, my father's Ronald, so mm -hmm. my family and friends call me Kevin. Yeah. They said, Kevin, once you touch traditional dance as an American, it already changes. Yeah. You're studying, your integrity is there, so don't worry about it. We see what you're doing, just keep studying. And so that has been an uh, incredible lesson and blessing. 2001, I went to Cuba for the first time, and the same thing there. It's a traditional company, folklore companies, and it's like, oh, so the language just started to um, bubble up. And yeah. so there's all this range now. So in this concert, there's um, uh, here tonight, a piece called Torch, that I made for this incredible sister, Beth Young, who lost her battle to cancer some years mm -hmm. ago, right? We saw her, she studied with me for maybe 20 years. Saw her through two hip replacements, mm -hmm. this bout with cancer, and she would lose her hair and grow back. Ron, can I come to class? Mm -hmm. I said, Beth, of course. Sometimes she would watch, 
Sometimes she would dance, yeah. and she was a, a, a volunteer advocate for evidence. Got an a, a email like uh, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m., January 5th. Beth is in the hospital. She wants to see you. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want anyone else to know. 1 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. Another email. She's joined the ancestors. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, man, what do I do to lift this woman up who is so incredible? And she left us this legacy. Ah, uh, we are the torch. So inside of this, we have a gungun. Right? Uh -huh. We have Ushumare from Brazil. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? yes. and so that's how it, it happens. <laughs> yeah. it, but, but being receptive to the idea that the ancestors are going to speak regardless. Yes. And so how you honor them with the work. And so that, that really does bring us to Cuba because we've had this reinvigoration now uh -huh. um, when you know, former President Obama opened the borders uh -huh. for people to get there right. and to connect. Yes. I have some ancestral legacy that's passed through Cuba. They there is, um, and, and I'm tickled that you have worked with Arturo O'Farrell, right? Because oh. I'm a McNeil. Oh. So, so the whole idea of Afro-Latino with Irish last names uh -huh, uh -huh. and how that manifests itself in who we are and right. how we express, um, it just always gave me a feeling of kinship with right. their family. Uh -huh. So we have Chico and we have Arturo, right. and Arturo won has never shirked or shied away from Afro-Latino. Right. So what that means and how that um, kind of synergy works with the kind of work that you do through uh -huh. dance and what he does through composition. So this is an amazing story. So uh, Toro O'Farrell, we met in Havana maybe seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I had created a piece uh, on Malpaso based in Havana, and he works with them a lot. Yes. We meet, I'm like, ah, oh, that music is incredible. Bear hug, right? <laughs> First meeting. Yes. Well, Ron, I love your work. I said, brother, it's amazing. Your work is incredible. But I don't poach people's collaborators. I'm going to, out of respect, okay, I love you, but y'all belong together. It's cool. Years later, he's working on this Afro-Cuban version, musical version of, of Carmen. Mm -hmm. Ron, I need a choreographer. Can you work on it? I was like, what? <laughs> right? So in Miami, we do this thing. It's incredible. Okay. I say, oh, Robert Battle calls me. He's a new artistic director for the Ailey Company. Yes. And he says, Ron, we're going back to Lincoln Center. I would love to do something new. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, no, this is a different conversation. But he asked me for a piece. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, Ataro, I want to use some of your music. I had this recording stuff, but there's this thing I saw online. I can't find it anywhere. He said, oh, no, we never pressed that. Mm -hmm. But I'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. This piece, Open Door, the fifth piece I put on the Ailey Company. After the premiere, he says, brother, I want to make some music for you. I was like, what? <laughs> and so we started working on new conversations, mm -hmm. right, from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. He said, no, usually choreographers, I work with choreographers, they have an idea, they want, or it's already choreographed, and I'm just giving them music. Mm -hmm. And this is a co collaboration from the ground up, nice. right? So we had a week in uh, Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival in, in Massachusetts mm -hmm. in March. Snowstorm, so we had nothing to do but create, <laughs> right? right. Uh, in one week, five days, I made 23 minutes, <laughs> okay? And he was with the, on his piano, and he sheet music on the laptop. Yeah. He said, oh, I need to make some more. Oh, I need the flute there, da da da, da. So we make this stuff. In July, he um, gives me this the recording, because we started to do it um, with the recording music. But I said, oh, man, come into the studio, studio because some of it, Mm, mm, yeah. mm, right? Yeah. He said, no, come on. So he came to the office. We sat. He said, oh, yeah, I hear, yeah, the club is playing Wawanko. That's, we're not da da da. Had this whole conversation. So then maybe two weeks, we go back into the studio. Now I have the dancers here. I'm in the booth with Otoro, the engineer, his son, Otoro's son, mm -hmm. the manager, and we remix this thing. Oh, we have a drummer out there. I said, okay, now. Take out the clave, drummer, okay, he, Arturo talks to him, like, put something in there. He comes in, I say, brother, no, no, you got to go off, da, da, da. So we're doing that re-engineered sections here, the nice. two sections here in Philly. Nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. Well, I, I think that, that will inspire a lot of people because I think 
we are so grounded in the administrative process uh -huh. of how artistic collaborations happen now, right? Because yes. if the grant money isn't there or the private donor isn't there, then people think these things can't happen. What you've just described is the real organic uh -huh. synergy that happens between people who are meant to share influence yes. and collaborate together, and then you work out the rest of the stuff later. But, right, and the, the those other pieces are important, but him and I, we say, I have an agent, you have a manager, let them deal with that stuff. Right, <laughs> right. But Jacob's Pillow came on board, they commissioned all of the music. I was like, ah, oh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And he was open, there's no ego yeah. in terms of the, and his son's like, oh yeah, that, that flute is too high, let's, oh, bring it okay, that tube is too aggressive. And we're just honest with each other. He's like, brother, I love you, I need to go, you stay here, finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Finished mixing it with yeah. everybody. Yeah, so it's really a, a, an amazing process. But then there's five other sections that we did remix, but now we have to go. This stuff is choreographed, but now it's like, oh no, there's a real flute, not the computerized. Right. right? So I'm like, oh no, I got to respond to that for real, mm -hmm. which is, not that long I got the recording and now I can just paste it on. No, I still have homework. Mm -hmm. And so even though I was like, oh, no, I got two sections that are solid. I feel good about it. And I'll find some time to go back. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so this, it, it's a building process. Yes. It's a fluid process. Yes. Yes. So you're here in Philly. The snow is melting. Thank goodness. It's going to get warmer over the next couple of days. How, what do you want audiences to receive from uh -huh. this performance and take back out into the world with them? So the, there's, there's a couple of things. So we're doing Torch which is about legacy and that we can survive because people have, right? Yeah. We're doing Ebony Magazine to a village, which is all about the facade of beauty, which is not what life is about. <laughs> and then it's about this grief inside of this piece. I made it on the Cleo Parker Dance Ensemble in Denver, Colorado. And during the process, the creative process, I was hanging out with Lenny Williams, incredible choreographer mm -hmm. dancer who worked with Elio Pomare. Mm -hmm. I had adored him and now he's there with me. I missed my flight because we were at the museum <laughs> watching Jacob Lawrence, just okay. talking, talking, talking. When I came back for the premiere, he had passed away. I was like, mm -hmm. oh. So then I had to, because of who I am, bring him into the piece. Yeah. And then I wrote a piece about how we deal with loss, right? Mm -hmm. We have new conversations, which is about Ochosi who's all about what is right in the world. Yep. All this nonsense, we'd be like, uh-uh. No, what is right is right. I'm a Libra, <laughs> so I'm familiar with the Josie. <laughs> right, but they're like, no, people know that hate is not right. Yes. Right? Okay. And then I think the closing is Four Corners, where at the four corners of the earth, the angels are praying and they won't rest until there's peace. And so when the audience leaves, I need them to feel, I think they will feel that we can be because they are. Mm -hmm. Well, I, this has been delightful. <laughs> now, I'm excited to see the show, but it's also wonderful to meet you, to understand more of your philosophy of how these pieces come together and what you instill in the work and with your company. And uh, I know that we're going to have some footage, some rehearsal footage where we get just a taste. Uh, the, the dancers, they uh, will probably just be waking up in their bodies. So the rehearsal for the um, for the tech is really low key. So that's probably not the best okay. footage, yeah. Gotcha. But um, this has been incredible. And you remind me of my um, former associate artistic director, Renee Redding Jones. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just the smile, the oh. eyes. Yeah, yeah, well, thank yeah. thank you. I like that. Well, I've, I always want people to feel connected. <laughs> and so we gotta make sure this is a regular thing. We need to have you back in Philadelphia more often. Yes. And we need to make sure that we're bringing this conversation and this um, awareness of how wow. our culture lives through us uh -huh. in, in, in our conversations. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Wonderful Thank to meet you. Thank you. Next Move Dance presents Ron K. Brown and the Evidence Dance Company, December 14th to the 17th at the Prince Theater at Broad and Chestnut. Go to princetheater.org slash next dash move to get tickets.